Brilliant. When you're ready. So if you'd like to come to your feet, we'll start by climbing to stretch the body. So let's reach over the head, but really pause. You know, if we go very quickly, yes, we'll stretch the bigger muscles, but let's try and go a little bit deeper and really reach. Uh, it's actually the case that what holds us upright is more fascia than the muscles, so that we've got a lot of strain on our fascia. So it's really worth giving it time to really stretch and lengthen. And apart from anything else, it just feels really nice when you get that extra little bit of give in the stretch. Let's have one more each side. You can let the head drop if that uh, causes tension in the neck looking up. Nice big reach and then shrug at the shoulders. We're going to reach forwards now. So think about hinging from the hips. Keep the legs as straight as you can unless it's too much on the backs of the legs. Hinge and reach forwards. We want to feel like someone's pulling our hands forward, someone's pulling our hips backwards and get that length along the spine. Obviously, now we're adding that hamstring stretch as well. So a little bit of a reach forwards with the hands back with the hips. And then soften the knees and roll up. Let's just take a twist now. If you press into the front of your shoulder, just to encourage that external rotation and dropping of the shoulder blade down, let's take a twist, look over your shoulder. Again, we're going to pause on the side so that we can reach the length a little bit more. Shoulder down. Look with your eyes all the way to the side. And then slowly come center, let's take it to the other side. So shoulder back and down. If you feel like shoulder blades are nice and comfortable on the back of the body. Looking over your shoulder, eyes to spring into the corner, coaxing the shoulder down and the chest open. These pecs get very short and if we're rounding over work for long periods of time. So just allowing them to really lengthen out, that extra little bit of a stretch twist, and then release out. For a lateral stretch, we're going to place the feet hip distance apart. We're going to soften the knees and then send the hips over to the right. And with this left hand, we're going to reach all the way to the side wall. So try to avoid rounding forwards. That won't stretch the side of the body. So hips square to the front, shoulders square to the front, and lean. So we're leaning into the hip, getting a stretch from the outer hip, and stretch into the side. Now, if you're all secure and balanced here, let's take the upper. Upper, upper arm overhead, feel the shoulder blade lift, and then like a cactus arm, elbow towards the waist. Let's take three more reaches overhead. You see this takes it more into the outer hip. And then as we draw the elbow in towards the waist, we can maybe reach a little bit further with the left arm. Twice more, reaching, getting that lovely stretch on the side of the body. Last time, reach and draw in and come center over to the other side. So let the hips sway to the other side. Let's reach for the side wall, shoulder back and down. Feel planted through those feet, secure through your feet. And then let's reach overhead and then draw elbow in. So you feel the shoulder blade lifting and lowering, reaching and shoulder back and down here. So we feel, uh, or we're resisting the temptation to let the shoulder drop. Big stretch, last couple of rounds. Yummy. Oh, good, good, good. And then elbow in and come center. Just have a little swing around the waist. We'll clasp the hands behind the back just to fully open in a kind of more symmetrical way across the chest. Hands behind your back, shoulders back and down and broadening across the chest. We're going to take one round of sun salutations, just to get the heart rate up a little bit. No fancy add-ons, but one thing we will add on though is in when we're in a runner stretch, we'll take a kind of a, a lifting position where the back of the hand is coming up to the shoulder. It'll be tempting for the elbow to lift, so try to keep the elbow close to the body and think about the hand lifting up to the ceiling. Like do one hand together or both if you've got your balance. It'll make sense when we get there. Come to the front of your space. So arriving at the top of your mat or wherever you're working, and rolling the shoulders back and down, just take a moment to close the eyes and let the shoulders drop. Weight more into the heels than into the toes. 
So sometimes it almost feels like we're going to fall backwards, but we spend so much time in a rounded forward position that that feels like the norm. Let's reopen, reset what the default lovely long line, our plumb line is. And let's take a deep breath and stretch the arms overhead. Breathe out, swan dive, hands down the backs of the legs, gently drawing yourself towards the thighs without forcing. We take a halfway lift, we're really lengthening the spine, including the neck. And maybe a new set, your right foot back here, we're in that runner lunge I mentioned. So here, if you feel stable, you might take both hands to the front of your shoulders, but remember elbows in, they'll want to wing out behind you. Otherwise, maybe you put the back knee down and you work with one hand at a time. We're here for a few rounds, so you've got time to try with both hands, with one at a time. If you're taking both hands to the front of your shoulders, and your legs are straight. Try and think about scissoring your inner thighs together so the legs stay strong. So pressing into the front of the shoulders, elbows closer in. You feel a little bit of a squeeze between the shoulder blade. Let's go for that twice more, whichever version, one hand or both. Squeeze between the shoulder blades. Just the work between the rhomboids just in the rhomboids just helps us keep the shoulders from rounding forwards. And let's step back to a flank. So your knees may be lifted or down, your choice for coming down to the belly. So if your practice is just around, go for it. Otherwise, knees down, slide onto your belly. And we'll take a curl up. Baby cobra, full cobra, full up dog, to see how your spine is today. Let's meet in a down dog. Tuck your toes under and start to pedal it through from one foot to the other. Don't worry if the heels don't reach the floor. Just the intention of sending the heels down should give you a nice stretch in the calf muscle. A nice deep breath in and out of the nose, feeling the stretch down the back of the legs. Because we've only got time for one round, we're making a hybrid Surya Namaskara A and B. So when we return, we'll take a crescent warrior. To step your right foot forward, you might place the knees down and help the right foot to the front, otherwise step straight to the front. We're coming up into our crescent warrior, so maybe walking your hands up the body, lifting the body, back leg as straight as you can manage, bottom tuck, so we're getting a nice hip flexor stretch there, and let's sweep the arms overhead. Take a moment here. So really connect with the floor through both feet, back leg as straight as you can manage, with the bottom slightly tucked, so we are targeting those hip flexors. Breathing deeply here, when we step the feet together, it's good to toss now a chair squat. Let's step the toes together, the big toes together, and squeeze the knees together for extra support and working those adductors. All right, hands to the floor, lightly step your left foot forwards, big toes together, knees together, weight back into the heels, scoop the arms up and press into the heels. Slowly let your drilling holes in the floor. Overhead hands meet to return. Let's do that to the other side. A breath in to stretch overhead. Breathing out, coming into your fold. Hold wherever the hands fall and lightly draw yourself in. So here we're flexing the spine, we're rounding. The heel will straighten the back for a flat back halfway lift. This time your left foot stepping back, the runner lunge high, your knee high or down at the floor. Scissors the inner thighs together, squeeze your glutes, either one hand at a time or both, working with those postural muscles, pausing long enough that you can actually connect and feel the sensations between your shoulder blades, that squeeze. And when we're conscious of that squeeze, the activation of the muscles is a lot more effective. So a little squeeze, release, squeeze, or one hand at a time. Focusing on what you can feel so that maybe you can go a little bit deeper. One more round. Big squeeze up, back to the hands towards the shoulders, if not on the shoulders. Elbows down to the hips. And then let's take a plank, step back. So here, either both knees to the floor and slither onto your belly, otherwise onto the toes and come down to the floor. 
curling up, it might be a sphinx, baby cobra, full cobra, up dog, spine extension. It's all the same, so long as you're comfortable and you're getting a nice level of stretch in the back of the body. Front of the body, <laughs> tuck the toes, let's knees in the down dog, again, pedal it through. And then settle with the heels quite close to the floor. Take a moment to extend it, stretch in all directions, the back of the legs, the spine. We're stepping the left foot forward. So you can go ahead and step straight to the front, otherwise help the foot into place. We're keeping the back heel lifted if possible and lifting for a high present. Back leg straight as you can, find that hip flexor release on the front of your right leg and pause. So the low half of your body sinking down, grounding down, the upper body lengthening up to the ceiling. Hips and shoulders square to the front. Let's tap the fingers to the floor to come into that last chair squat. So fingers tap to the floor, big toes together, knees together, knees stay bent. Hips as low as you can bear. Leaning with the thumbs, press the heels into the floor, engaging your core, coming all the way up. Hands meet and return. Brilliant. Let's have a little shake out, swing around the spine. We'll take a little hula hoop for the hips just so that you start to think about the muscles of the hips before you come down to the floor. So let's find the biggest range of movement that's comfortable. Don't worry about the upper body. Think about the main driver of the movement being the pelvis drawing the circle on the floor. Sometimes we're in a bit when we're a little bit tight in the hips, we focus on the upper body going. See if you can change the emphasis and make it about the hips. It's fine for the upper body to be a counterbalance and go in the opposite direction. But if you're standing in a barrel, touch the outer edge of the barrel and then let's go the other way. When we come down to the floor, we'll be taking a, a mermaid position and doing a few exercises where we're working, strengthening the hips. Are you ready? Let's have one roll down to the mat and then we'll meet sitting on our bottoms, chin to chest. Take a roll down, a little zigzags, quite nice for the muscles of the back to find a little bit of release there. When the hands find the floor, face them forwards and let's come to sit down. So if we start with the feet in front of us and post the arms behind for support, feet actually a bit wider than hip distance, if we slowly drop the knees to one side, we'll externally rotate this leg, internally rotate this one. And let's take it to the other side. Now your bum will start to shift, don't worry about that. It's inevitable, the hips will shift. But take it side to side just a couple of times aware of any restrictions. So really lifting this hip here and then taking it to the side and the thigh stretch, taking it to the other side. At the same time, see if we can keep the collarbone really open here to, up, across the chest, fingers pointing behind you, squeeze the shoulder blades together. So those are muscles that we worked in the sun salutations, we're keeping the squeeze activated. Now, it may be that this is easy for you, in which case you maybe don't need to post the arms behind. Maybe you can just use your core, have a go. So it's, if this is challenging, stick with this and get a nice big movement. Right at the end on that side, we can get a spinal twist, which is very nice. Otherwise, you're working your core to take the knees side to side to support that hip movement. Your core is engaged. If you're feeling strong, your feet will lift and you place the feet to the other side. So find a level, but keep going. Keep that mobility in the hips. Keep going side to side, finding what's a good level. Next one is going to be pretty challenging for everyone. Me too. So, we're going to come into a polar pose, Baddha Konasana. We're going to lean into the left hand, lean over to the left, 
Shoot the right leg out to the side, knee and toe pointing forward, and take a lift of the leg. Outer hip strength isn't most of our strength. Too. So let's take it gently side to side. You can just make much weight into the hands as you like to get a lift in the leg. So again, with everything, there's always levels. If you want to work a little bit harder, you keep upright in the body and take a lift. Maybe no hands. Wherever you are, take it side to side at your pace with as much support in the arms, the hands, as you feel you need. But try each time we shoot the leg to the side to make sure the knee and the toes are pointing forward. So we're really working directly on the outer hip. The harder to reach uh, spot in the hips, but it's at least easier doing it sitting down than if we were standing. And I did consider making the two that standing up. Last couple of times each side, and then we're returning to that mermaid position. Let's have one more each side. And we can post the hands down to give you a little bit of a counterbalance, a little bit of strength to get a lift. And then let's start with the feet over to the right. In this position, the your right hip will be a little bit higher than the left, which means the spine's out of alignment. So let's try and work on that. If we exaggerate that lift, rolling the hip forwards, and then the other way is if we're turning both hips, the thighs over to the right. So just a little bit of a waggle side, to side and see if you can start to more deeply imprint that right hip into the floor. Don't worry if your hips are way up in the air. We're all a work in progress and we'll do fine as we are. So I like to have the webbing of the hands right to the crease at the top of the leg. All right, let's stop there. We're going to reach, post the left hand to the floor and stretch away. So this lifts the hip away from the floor. Take a big stretch here, pausing, and then to work the hip into the floor, let's stretch in the other direction. So you're leaning into that hip and stretching. If this is too much on your knee, don't worry, lift the knee or maybe stack your knee on top of your foot. One more stretch each side. So here we're exaggerating the lift, the distance between the hip and the floor. And then here, we're working on the mobility in that hip and reaching over to the side. One more thing on this side. Let's lift this hip to plant both hands on the left, on the outside of your left knee, and let's lift this leg. We're swiveling, take the knee forwards and back, forwards and back. Now see if you can isolate this movement to the femur within the hip joint so we're not using the upper body swaying forwards and backwards. Try and keep this just about the thigh bone and the muscles that support the thigh. The more you take the leg behind you, the more we get an extension in the front of the hip and you'll feel that in your hamstrings. You keep your knee bent. Nearly there. Three, two, one. Same foot on the outside of your knee and hug in. So now see if you can get both sit bones towards the floor, if not on the floor. Knees coming to the opposite shoulder and hug. We're going straight to the other side, if I can remember the order. <laughs> Either way, you're going to feel it in your outer hip. And then we're on to a core, core little round of exercises. All right, hand the legs out to the side. And let's first of all feel this hip lifting and then sitting into the floor. So just feel what the difference is hips. So we're rolling the thighs over to one side and then imprinting, getting the hip more into the floor. So just feel that movement as if we're rolling, we're turning the femur within the hip joint. Great, great. Let's exaggerate that now by reaching overhead across to the sides of the hip lift and then reaching to imprint the hip into the floor. You'll feel your core, your waist muscles engage here as you open, reach your obliques here, crunching to help you reach. Once more each side, a nice big stretch into the arm. 
wonderful. So, weight into the hands, let's lift the leg and start to struggle. So, maybe come to the chest and then behind. Feel a squeeze in your glutes, your hamstrings to take the leg back. And are we still breathing? All these movements make your, makes us realize how, how little we use our hips in our day to day lives. So, so much just walking, sitting. We're not using the legs as much as we, we should, or we can. Wonderful. So remember, try to isolate the movement into the leg. You're doing well. Let's take a seated twist. Place the foot on the outside of the knee and hug in. So we're trying to get those sit bones on the floor, but whatever, as long as you're getting a nice stretch into the hip that we've just been working, it's all good. Now, it struck me from one of my classes this week that some people aren't so clear on where their TDAs are, as opposed to the six packs, the transversalis, the lower abdominals, and the obliques. So we're gonna have a quick whistle stop tour of your abdominals. So when you're ready, if you come onto your back, if I think about your transverse, your TVA is as we dig your fingers into the fleshy bit between the ribs and the hips and clear your throat. <clears throat> Most of you will feel that activation. So there your TVA is. So let's lie on our backs. We can keep the fingers into that fleshy part, clear your throat, and hopefully you'll feel those activate. Keeping those activated, let's take the knees into the chest. If we keep the head on the floor, we won't outsource them to the six pack. We want to keep thinking about the waist, pulling away from the waistband, but also that activation of the TVAs. If this is tough, you stay here. If you feel that you can manage to straighten the legs and return, add that on, but no, no arching the back. Let's try six, either six counts of holding this position where we're holding the activation of the TVAs or the stretching, and returning to tabletop. And do keep your fingers on your TVA so that you're aware if you lose that activation and you can re-engage. So the curves of the spine not changing. TVAs are so important for our spine health and protecting the back because they wrap all the way around. So literally like a corset around the spine. Get your chin tucked. One more, a little bit of work for the TVAs and then hug the knees into the chest. The next one, if we think about the six packs, we use a cycling movement, but with a curl up. So holding the head in the hands and really make a nice comfortable hammock for the head so that we're not straining the neck. If we take, say, the right knee into the chest, we want to focus on curling the upper body up. And now this might already be a bit of a challenge. Focus on lifting the chest rather than an emphasis on drawing the knee in. You want to lift, I'm already shaking. We're here now, we are activating the six pack muscles and you can feel they kind of bulge out a little bit with that activation. TVAs activate and pull us in. The six packs will bulge a little bit as they fire up. So let's stay here for six counts. Option if you've got a bit more fuel in the tank, I always like to give you options. The straight leg can lift and lower, but the emphasis is always on lifting. If you're a lady, think about where your bra strap is and lifting to that point. If, if that doesn't make sense to you, think about lifting the knee towards your thigh. Last couple, keep that activation in your core. Six packs working well. And the TVAs will be switched on as well here. Lower the head, knees into the chest. We'll take that to the other side. So again, cradling the head so we're not yanking on the neck. We'll take it to the other side. So again, emphasis on drawing your chest up towards the thigh rather than the thigh in towards the chest. We either hold here or we take add on a movement to your straight leg. But again, the emphasis on keeping high up in the upper body and no curves in the spine changing. Try to breathe laterally. So think about the backs of the ribs extend, step, ex, extending sideways so that we keep this engagement in the core. 
Last couple, hopefully you are very aware of where your six pack muscles are. One more. And then hug the knees into the chest. All right. Next, obliques. We'll go back to that cycling action. We'll take the elbow, elbows to the outside of the thigh. And again, we're going to pause here until we feel that crunch engagement in the side of the waist. So you can even press your fingers in and you'll feel the side of the waist engage. Again, there's an option here of lifting and lowering the other leg. But if it's enough work, just reaching the elbows to the outer thigh and feeling that work on the side of the waist, you stay here. So we keep thinking about tucking the bottom under so that the, the tailbone is pointed to the bottom edge of your mat. So keeping the spine long, shoulders down away from the ears. And again, we're trying to avoid any yanking on the neck. Try to keep thinking about the core muscles engaging. It's kind of hard to forget they're not. <laughs> okay, let's hug the knees into the chest and then we take it to the other side. Maybe change the cross in your fingers, curl up and then swivel so your elbows are reaching the outer thigh of the other leg. We extend the leg. Now, if this is too much, obviously both knees can stay into the chest. As long as you feel the side of the waist switching on, that's our target and you're winning so only take an, a, a lift into the leg if you feel you've got a little bit more to give whilst concentrating on our target area so if you feel the side of the waist not working concentrate on lifting towards the outer thigh and we lift and lower try and keep your core the front of your belly zipped in think about pulling your waist away from the waistband but concentrate on that crunch into the side of the body. In the doing so well. <laughs> and remember, the more we get to know the muscles, what they feel like, how we activate them, the more effectively we use them. That's got to be even. Oh, hug the knees into the chest, have a little rock. Last of all, then lower abdominals. We can get those by taking a reverse curl. So let's have the arms straight, fists, little fingers into the floor, and draw the knees into the chest. Now, some of you might quite use readily lift the hips off the floor. If that doesn't work, you can hold the knees and help draw them up because it's a habit. We just need to get the brain thinking about which muscles need to engage to get that hip movement. If you've you can work with your triceps, with your arms pressed into the floor. We go for this movement here. Now get your chin tucked into your chest. We're avoiding lifting all the way up. We want to concentrate on those lower abdominal muscles. So it's a small lift. I expect that by now you can feel all of your abdominals working. But let's go for six, five, four, Three, two, one, amazing. Take a full body stretch, arms over the head. As you breathe in, puff out the belly, you get a nice stretch over those muscles that we've worked. Big stretch right across the palms of the hands, air between the toes, give the fingers, the toes a wiggle. And then we're going to come up and stretch the wrist muscles ready for the rest of your day. So come up to sitting. And wherever you are, whatever's a comfortable seated position, we often neglect the wrist. So let's take the right hand, hold around the join of the wrist and pull down and make a fist. It's very restricted movement now as we circle the wrist. Here we're getting deep into the fascia where we Often hold tension from repetitive movements. So think about your mouse work or texting. And then take those circles in the other direction. Like you're shuffling up and down your wrist. So you're giving a really deep massage around the wrist into the palm. And then we'll take it across to the other hand. Shake out. So spread the fingers, take hold around the joint, a really secure hold and then make a fist and start to circle. Restricting the movement so that we are 
uh, lightly pulling on the deeper soft tissues, the other direction with those circles. And then a big massage around the joint, thumb into the palm of the hand. And we'll finish with a few shoulder rolls and there's 30 minutes. All right, hold the shoulders, lift, breathe out, melt the shoulders back and down. See if you can breathe in to lift, breathe out, coax the shoulders back and down. Again, breathing in to lift, breathe out, out shoulders down, arms overhead, drop the head to one side and float the fingers down. This may be the calmest part of your day, so enjoy this one more big breath for yourself, drop the head to the other side. Float the fingers down. Nice soft jaw. And then we're done. Well done. And thank you very much for joining.